So um, I don't want you to use paint for this stage. I want you to use drawing tools. Was that your question? Okay, now I have this really kind of fun negative space inside my collage. And then I've got these other organic shapes. Um, you might want to vary, also vary the size of your cuts so that they're not all the same size. Maybe make some smaller ones. You can, if you find like interesting things inside your collage, you can cut out. Like you, all of a sudden you might see, that looks like a little house or a hut or something. And I like that, so I'm gonna cut it out. And maybe that can become something that's meaningful to me in my piece. This is, so, this is the instinctual part of this. Looks like I'm, I'm favoring organic round shapes over geometric. I'm seeing them in there. And that's a nice way to kind of create contrast in your work of art. You could have shapes that are kind of outlining and shapes, and then we can cut them up more once we re-collage them. So now we have the, all these random cut up pieces. And we're gonna take our new piece of paper. Again, this can be your drawing paper, or if you have an, another piece of watercolor paper, that's good. And we're gonna kind of go back to originally what we did. But this time I want you to really pay attention to the negative space. We can use this white paper again as negative space. I can overlap my collage. I can cut back into it. If I want to change the shape of something, I can cut into it. I like that little hut. I don't want to cut that. And you don't necessarily have to reuse all your pieces. Um, we can paint. We're going to paint on this one more time after we glue this all down, and then we'll be done. It's like we're calling it re re collage, repurpose, and this is kind of what Lee Krasner did, right? That painter that we talked sure. about last class that would paint on all these different canvases, and then she'd cut up the actual canvases and glue them back together with drawings and all sorts of mixed media onto a new canvas. So this is where we're taking some cues from her. We also don't need to really, we don't have to stick to this rectangle. We can cut into these and make this canvas um, not a rectangle. We can turn it into whatever we want it to be. And so now I'm paying attention to all that white negative space because I think that looks really cool. And when I go in and paint again, I might not want to fill that all in. I might want to keep some of it. In fact, I really like what's happening right here. I think I want to create a little bit more of that in other areas. And since I've decided to make all these shapes part of my art, then I need, can think about how they look too, like how they overlap and hang off the page. It's kind of fun. Sort of looking for some balance here, some asymmetrical balance. So I like it. I'm not going to think too hard on it. I'm just going to use my instincts. Okay, and then I'm going to take a glue stick for my Elmer's and I'm going to re-glue. This time I really want to, I want to add quite a bit of glue because this is thicker paper. So this is the tricky part, right? Elmer's glue doesn't, I mean, glue stick doesn't work as good with the watercolor paper. You might need to glue it down and then put a heavy book on top. Elmer's glue would probably be the best for this. Okay, 
Okay, so that's kind of just what I'm looking for today. Um, and then I will show you, I'm going to continue to demo and record this. And then you don't have to watch this next part because I'm going to paint on top of this. And that's what I'm going to ask you to be doing um, in class on Friday. But I don't expect you to get further than this today. You're going to draw and then you're going to cut it up and try to repaste it. Um, Miss Greninger, uh -huh. I'm just done with my first coat. So next, do you want us to draw with like the um, like other media or whatever? Um, like, is your paint still I'm, wet though? Oh uh, yeah, a little. If your paint's still wet, I, then you should let it dry before okay. you draw. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Can we use glue as a drawing tool? Sure. That sounds fun. Then it will be kind of a textured surface, and that'll be a neat addition to your painting. Um, you don't have to use all your shapes. If you find that there's you like that negative space and you don't want to fill in everything, you don't have to put all the shapes back down. So every time we make a change to this artwork, it gets more and more abstract. And we, we still can see remnants of our object. You know, I can still see like parts of the shoelaces and the heel of the boot and the tread on the boot, but um, I have I have pretty much lost that original literal boot. It's gone, and that's that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing when we're trying to work on abstract art. And now it just becomes you know more instinct. Do I like this? This is something I want to look at. Okay, so I've glued this down, but the like I said, the glue stick is not the best for the watercolor paper. It doesn't seem to really want to stick. So I'd either have to put a heavy book on here and let it dry, or I could go find some Elmer's glue, which I have, of course, a giant tub of it. And I'm gonna put some on this palette here. And I'm just gonna use some of it to tack down my pieces better. Good old Elmer's glue. I'm just going to use my finger because I don't have a popsicle stick. And this is going to take some time to dry too, but it's going to definitely secure your piece more. This is Miss Grunninger getting messy here. That's down pretty good. It's already, I can already feel this glue stick sticking. Oh, look, hey, that piece kind of separated. That looks cool. Happy accident. That happens a lot in art making. Happy, happy little accidents. Okay, so that glue will take a minute or two to dry. I'm actually gonna paint on top of it though. 
So this next stage of this video is going to be what you're going to work on on Friday and also the day of your final. So you do not feel the pressure to do this stage yet. And we, we could even rewatch this on Friday to remind ourselves. But at this point, everybody is working on your collage. You can turn your cameras off. You don't need to be watching this part. I am recording it and I will replay it on Friday. Okay. Um, all right, so now I have this very fun and funky, crazy collage here. Um, I've decided that I don't like this rectangular paper shape, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut shapes into it, create some negative space. Maybe sometimes I can create my own negative space or I can follow the shape of the colored collage parts. I like this weird opening here, so I'm going to cut into that. This is really reminding me of a Frank Stella sculpture slash painting. We looked at his work at the beginning of the semester. I could show you again, but I bet this is kind of how he works. I wouldn't be surprised. So now I have this all this fun, like cut out shape around my image. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Now I'm going to leave this white space in here because I want to paint on it. Okay, so this is the last step. The last step is to add more painting. Um, and I want you to use two techniques. So remember I gave you the link to those sur acrylic surface decorating techniques. It's in the lecture and then also in the assignment. Um, so there's different ways you could decorate this. I've got my paint here and I really like that sponging that I did. I might do um, some wet brush and then let it dry a little bit and then sponge on top. I think that sounds like Ms. a good solution. Ms. Grittinger, I have a question. Yes. Um, so like, um, like there's like a spot where I don't want it to be any color. So mm -hmm. I painted it white and then I mixed a little bit of red. Now it's kind of like pink. Is it okay if I went over it with just a little bit of pink paint? Yeah, sure. This is what it's looking so far. Do you like it? Hang on one sec. I've got my video on top here. Oh yeah, I love all those big uh, bold shapes in the bottom left corner. Thank you. Looking good. Okay, so I'm going to do a little brushing and again at this point you get to choose your colors. Okay, I'm not going to dictate any particular color scheme. Um, if you want to throw a bunch of cool colors in there, a bunch of warm colors, black. In fact, I might even go a little darker here. Maybe, maybe I do a little like navy blue in those negative spaces and see how I feel about it. Now I'm just kind of like scumble brushing. Scumbling is when you kind of go back and forth with your brush and create sort of a texture. Kind of like that. Create some darker negative space. And then maybe I can go on top of it with some brighter um, sponging textures. Negative space doesn't always have to be white. And because this is the final thing I'm going to do to my painting, I really need to think of it, think of it that way. Like this is the last thing I'm going to do. I can paint over my collage. Don't have to stick to just the negative spaces. And really, you're just trusting your instinct at this point. There's no rules. There's no um, right answer for Miss Greninger. Um, there's only what you your gut is telling you to do. That's it. I try to teach you the technique, but 
the instinct and the artfulness of what you're doing is up to you. I can't teach you that part. That part is comes from straight from you. As you get older and you make more art too, you're going to um, learn how to trust it. There's going to be a different texture on the background paper too because it's um, drawing paper and it's going to get a little bit warpy against the um, collage paper and the watercolor paper, which I think is kind of interesting. So now I'm starting to pull a little bit of yellow into my black, which is when I mix it, it's turning kind of green. I think it's a nice contrast against all the swirly colors. And I'm feeling as though I, I like this white line and I'm, I'm feeling kind of sad that I don't have any white left. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of fill in the negative space with the dark, but then I'm going to go back over with white paint and add some line on top. I have this painting, um, I had a friend in grad school that was a painter, and I was in the ceramics department, but she was in the painting department. Um, her work was really abstract, but she she grew up in um, Indonesia, and she her artwork was very abstract, but she was taking memories of what the landscape looked like. There's a lot of rice fields in Indonesia, and she remembers them, she lived near them, and she would paint these rice fields, but very abstractly. And um, as a gift, like a like an end of the grad school experience gift to me, she gave me one of her large paintings. And I love this painting. I hang it in different ways in my house. I change it. Every year or so, I kind of flip it a different direction. Um, and look at it from a different perspective. And that's what you can do with these. You can hang it up one way and you could say, oh, I really like it that way. Or you could hang it this way. Or you could hang it this way. Or you could even hang it at a diagonal. It doesn't need to be traditional. You could hang it like this. Okay, so now I have kind of like the first coat my brushing coat. I did a little brushing and scumbling. I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna go back in with a sponge and do some texturing and maybe some scraffito. Oh, I could do some scraffito right now. Scraffito is when you take the end of your paintbrush and you have to have wet paint to do it and you draw into it to create kind of a texture. See how it's pulling the paint up? Be careful because that paper is delicate. It's not as sturdy as the watercolor paper, but it's kind of a nice. Can texture. I show you how it looks like so far? Yeah, sure. I used like a little bit of metallic um, powder thing on there. Nice. So Tabasum, I really love the black lines that are kind of coming through. Thank you. I think those are really interesting. Yeah. I tried to make it as like I tried to follow my gut, but yesterday, yes, or on Saturday when I was working on it, uh huh, when I was working on it a little bit, I messed up. So I was like, I'm not gonna trust you anymore. But then I did. And then <laughs> I yeah, you. It's hard. Sometimes we have these arguments with our gut, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, remember how I said, well, I really like that white line. 
this this one here. This is just the paper coming through during the collage, and I didn't paint into it. Um, oh, wow. Because I like that so much, I'm I'm gonna go in with my white paint and put some I more. Really like yours. Thank you. I I think I'm I'm kind of starting to like it more. I'm it's getting there for me. So I'm gonna add some nice thick white streaks here and there to break up the shapes. If I find an interesting shape that I want to kind of separate from another one, I can use the white to do that. You can leave, leave the paint really thick. That's one of the techniques, right? It's called impasto, thick paint. So as I'm working too, I um, want to give you guys a heads up. Of course, the end of the semester is near. And um, December 11th is the really the last day you can turn in any late work. So this is my recommendation to you that you go back through your grade, look at your grade summary. And if there's anything missing, because you're sixth graders, you, don't, you can do it for full credit still. So go ahead and go back into your all your assignments and try to do the ones that you haven't done yet and here's a hint every anything in the project category is going to be worth more points than the other categories so i would do those first those will raise your grade up uh, much faster than if you went in and did a bunch of check-ins because the check-ins are one and two points they they barely change your grade of course, if you don't do them all semester, they're going to affect your grade, but um, I would spend your time on getting the higher point late work in that's in the project category. And remember, December 11th is the last day you can turn that in. Okay, so I'm really liking this. I'm, I'm really happy I added those white lines. I think that added quite a bit of uh, nice negative space into my painting. I'm still calling this a painting even though it's a mostly collage, right? Imagine if this were 20 feet big, 20 feet wide and like maybe what? 15 feet deep or 15 feet in height and 20 feet wide and is hanging on a gallery wall or a museum wall in a famous art gallery. So I could stop here really. I don't, I've already put more than two techniques on here and I'm, I'm reconsidering the sponging because I really like these white thick lines and I, I don't want them to be covered up with sponging. So I'm gonna call this done. Calling it done and I'm gonna take a picture of it, my final photo, and then this which is what you would be submitting for your final semester. Um, when, when is this due? It is due by the end of the finals period. So, so, like, do we need to finish this um, all by next week's Friday? Or whenever we have our um, yes. yeah. practice period? Uh-huh. That is, that is when this your final project is due, the day of the final, by the end of the period. And your final is on the December 16th, Wednesday, I December 16th, from 8.30 to 10.20. Okay. And that's also written in Schoology for you. Okay. okay, but you have you have all week to work on this. You have today, you have Wednesday, and you have Friday. I'm going to take a photo of this for you guys. And when you take a photo, put it on a really nice background and make it the lighting good. Describe it to Nice angled shot of it. Yeah. Yes? Um, do we... Do we cut it up then put it on a new piece of paper? After you draw, yes. 
So you got to draw on it first, and then, okay. you, and then you, you cut it up, and then you re-glue it. And then um, Friday and the day of the final, you can do your last coat of paint with two techniques. I put the link to this um, new schedule for next week in the chat if anyone needed it. Thank you. So the schedule, the schedule that Tabasum just posted, let me take a peek at it, is the final schedule. And that's a different schedule than this week's schedule, you guys. So you're not going to class next week. You are only attending your final periods of time. So you have to look at the schedule and say, here, let me share my screen. And say, well, what is, so Monday is going to be weird too because you're going to attend all of your classes on that day for 30 minutes because there's no finals on Monday, but we have to be in school. So you're going to attend all of your periods for 30 minutes. So this is the schedule for that. And then there's a little time for office hours at the end of the day. Um, and then finals starts on Tuesday. So on Tuesday we have period one and period three finals. And then that's it. You guys are off by um, 1230. Um, and if you, the Wednesday the 16th, you have period two and four finals. Um, De Thursday, December 17th, you have periods five and seven. And then Friday, you have periods six and eight. Um, and then there's also two days for makeup finals. So if you um, you have a, a really good reason why you're, you have to miss that final block of time, um, then there's a period of time for makeup. Um, my recommendation to you is that you do not miss your final block of time. Um, it's not guaranteed that your teachers will be free uh, for you to do makeup finals on, in the time that you need them to do it. Because if they have a lot of students that need that, um, it's going to fill up, right? So. Um, by all means, attend the final that is provided um, to you. Miss Greninger, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is it like, um, why do we have eighth period first on Monday? Um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. It used to be, it used to be that way. Last year, when we had regular school, on Wednesdays, we had eighth period first. I don't know why, to be honest. I don't know the original logic on that, but. All right, so it's 9.52. Um, just continue to work. You're going to post a whip today. Um, so why don't you guys come back at 10.05 to post your whip and do your checkout. Mr. Ranger, look, I turned mine into a heart. Oh.